I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews and an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. From the actual records and authentic experience of the incidents in this unusual story, here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Sometimes I still wake up trembling, clothed in icy sweat and goose flesh. And I listen as though it's all still happening. The ghosts of those events walk from time to time. Ghostly phones jangle shatteringly. Whispers, plottings, counterplottings, code message, secret drop, deceit, craft, paralyzing doubt, fear. I still wake up trembling. It hardly seems over. My nine years of being a communist for the FBI. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabetic, Undercover Man. Sovetic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked The Black Gospel. I've ordered ice water sent up. There's the door. He's at the hotel. I'm Bob Stanton. But my communist chums know me only as Matt Sovetic, and they wouldn't like it if they knew I was registered here under a false name. I'd be in pretty serious trouble. I go to the door. Ice water, sir. It isn't the bellboy. It's a dapper guy in a smart suit and a Hamburg hat and a funny smile, holding the tray of water and glasses. I get ice water all right, right through my veins. Ice water? Who are you? I heard the bell captain take your order downstairs, and I met the bellboy in the corridor. I told him I was just going to visit Mr. Bob Stanton, that is. I ask who you are. Shall we talk about it inside, Mr. Servetic? Come in. Thank you. I tipped the bellboy very handsomely. He'll get it back. No obligation, Comrade Servetic. Comrade? My name is Alexis Ravenel. A communist, yes. But the communist of tomorrow. The red wave of the future. Devoid of emotion or sentiment. Dedicated impassively to one thing only. The end. Whatever that means. Destruction. Total annihilation without mercy of the corrupt society we despise. And whatever that means. I must ask you, Mr. Vetti, why do you live here under a false name without the knowledge of the party? Personal reason. Suppose I tell your chief. Or the control commission of this rather singular secret you've been keeping from them. What will they think? What do you think they'll think? They might strongly suspect... FBI. Why are you here? I want recruits. Recruits for what? For special duty. Is it cleared with the Kremlin? I am not obligated to reveal secret data to anyone, let alone you. Remember, Sovetic, you are in a highly compromising situation which you would have serious trouble in explaining to the control commission. In other words, you're blackmailing me into this special and secret work you're talking about. It's not blackmail if you can prove you are not engaged in espionage against the Communist Party. Maybe I can prove just that, Ravenel. And maybe not. I ask no embarrassing questions. Why should you trust me? Your success in keeping your other life here, shall we say, secret from the party for so long is a sure proof of your genius for secrecy and intrigue. That is all I ask now. You belong with me. And the hard, tough nucleus of the red future. You'll take a chance on me? Let me worry about that, huh? And discuss this with nobody. When do you have to have an answer? Tonight. 
Pretty fast, isn't it? You really have no choice to that. All right. Be here? You'll hear from me. Suppose I don't work out the way you hope. You will have lost nothing. You will perish with the others in the general conflagration of the earth and all that is corrupted in it. Night. Night, I say. Night and the dark river will engulf you. And everything on earth will be cleansed and purified in the grand and total annihilation. You have nothing to lose. Your decision by nightfall, then. Good morning, Mr. Stanton. <laughs> yes. Yeah. at the front of my shirt. Cold sweat plastered it to my chest. I've seen cold-blooded half-mad zealots before, but this is something that makes my scalp crawl. There's something impalpably terrible in that foppish man who calls himself Alexis Ravenel. I sit down to steady my legs. Then I go to the door to make sure nobody's listening. Then I call the FBI. Make a fast, urgent rendezvous. In my contact's car, pulled off the road in the suburbs. Strange, Matt. Very disturbing. You don't think this Ravenel is just a lunatic, then? I don't know. I just have a feeling that something pretty awful is represented by this Ravenel person. But what? Matt, I want you to make an appointment with Professor Miriam Kaspari at the university. Right away. Professor Miriam Kaspari. Tell her what Ravenel said about the red wave of the future. Admit I'm a communist? No. And don't say I sent you. Avoid any questions. Jay? I'll drive you to a pay station where you can call Professor Kaspari. Professor Miriam Kasperi is a large, strong-looking woman with a stern, almost wooden face. She wears a severe suit and does nothing whatever about her hair. But she knows her business, which is political science. She opens her ears when I start quoting Ravenel and his doomsday talk. <laughs> Alexis Ravenel. Well, I'm relieved if it amuses you. It scared me plenty. So simple. Simple is how I like it, but I don't get this. First, I do not even have to open a book to tell you that Alexis Ravenel is simply Ravenel Alexis reversed. The prison that is part of the great Peter and Paul prison in Russia. Are you saying our man was a prisoner there? No, but the man he sounds like died there in 1882. He died leaving a revolutionary legacy and many of his spiritual heirs are alive today. His creed lives. In communism, that is. Communism owes much to him. Lenin admired him. At 21 years of age, Sergei Natchev wrote the revolutionary catechism. Natchev? Listen. One, every revolutionary must be a dedicated man. That's our boy Ravenel. He should have no personal life, no emotions, no attachment, no property, no true name. His object is perpetually the same, the quickest and surest way of destroying our whole filthy order from top to root. That's enough. Disturbing. Disturbing? Well, where can I get that book? Any good library has it. Oh, thank you, Professor. Uh, Mr. Sovetic. Yes? Who told you to look me up on this? Why, I've heard of your work in political science. I see. Mr. Sovetic, when you look up the catechism, it'll be under the heading The Nacheus Monster. Good day, Mr. Sovetic. <laughs> I find the book in the public library, and I find the catechism and make another appointment with my FBI contact. I tell him what I've learned, and we read the rest of the revolutionary catechism in a small, obscure hotel across town. And the sickening dread that started in my own hotel room earlier in the day goes deeper and more terrifying. When a comrade is in danger, it may be necessary to determine if he is expendable. Nice fellow. The revolutionary must not hesitate to destroy any position, any place, any person in the world. He must hate everyone and everything with equal hatred. A revolutionary must penetrate everywhere. He must be prepared to kill and to perish himself. As he must be prepared to destroy with his own hands all those who stand in his way to the destruction of the entire world. There's a lot more. All the same. 
kill, destroy. The earth is rotten, destroy it. Man is corrupt, kill him. No distinction, no exceptions or exemptions. Kill. Now I'll tell you what I've been finding out, Matt. Sergei Nachev, born 1847, died Peter and Paul prisoner, 35. But not before he lit the torch that may bring the world down in ashes. The credo of nothingness, of nihilism, of pure and shattering terror for its own sake. This is what I've gotten myself into. Stay with it, Matt. We need you badly now. Why doesn't Ramonal seem to mind if I may be an FBI plant? He's up to something. We don't know what yet. Let's find out. I'm in a spot. We've got to stop Ravenoff. Get something specific on him. Because the next logical step from communism is nihilism. And that's the finish. What about this Professor Kaspari game? What about her? Is she okay? We have to consult experts sometime, Matt. Okay. Stay close to Ravenoff. He'll stay close to me. Don't worry. <laughs> And good evening, Mr. Matthew Savetic. What? You keep walking, Savetic. We'll go up to your room. You're the boss. Have a good day. Good evening. And what does the FBI think of all this? I wouldn't know, Robin Hall. <laughs> Very well. well. I can tell you this. I was doing some research at the university. Okay. And what did Professor Miriam Caspari tell you? How the devil did you know? Keep walking, Savetic. You see, Savetti, we are everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Don't rub it in. This is your hotel, isn't it? You ought to know. We'll go upstairs and reach decision. Here we are. Professor Caspari. You come in and close the door. Savetic, why is this woman here? I'm surprised you don't know. I am Professor Miriam Caspari, long a disciple of the master, Nacheyev. Nacheyev. And since the believers are two to one here, if not unanimous, I can put this gun away now. Can't I, Mr. Savetic? Now back to Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sabatic and the second act of our story. Ravenall and I have walked into my own hotel room, and there's Professor Miriam Caspari. Large and wooden, and she puts it away when it's plain that she and Ravenall have a lot in common. The black gospel of the Nacheyev monster. So you're on Ravenall's payroll. I had a faint feeling. The revolutionary is not paid except in the results he fights for. But the comrade Ravenall accepts me as for him to say, I hope so. Comrade Savetic came to you today for information. He did. I read him parts of the catechism. He seemed greatly upset. I'm convinced he came to me at the suggestion of the FBI. Not that it at all matters. But can you risk a possible informer among you? Had you taken it upon yourself to shoot Savetic here? At least to find out if he is an FBI informer. Believe me, good friend, that it does not at all matter. The hardest converts often become the most zealous revolutionaries. And I think Comrade Savetic is elected to cast his fortunes with mine. True? I'm in. You will receive your first assignment very soon. You may go now. This is my room you're telling me to leave, you know. Dr. Caspari shows a kindly point of view to our cause. If Dr. Caspari would care to stay for a chat. Gladly. And if Comrade Savetic will excuse himself. Okay. Oh, Comrade. Yeah? Don't bother to invite the FBI into the next room with listening devices. We'll only be here a matter of minutes and then go elsewhere. Don't worry. I 
walked around the block a couple of times, waiting for Ravenel and Caspari to clear out of my room. I'm confused and scared. That's bad. When I get back to the hotel, on. I lie down on the bed, breathing deeply, trying to unclench my hands, trying to relax and roll with the punches. It's small-time Sovetic versus the Nechev monster, and it's rocky going. Oh. Yeah? This is Professor Kaspari. Well? Can you come down to my apartment right away? No. Why should I? It's important, and I can't talk over the phone. Is he there? He's gone now. 8 Orchard Street, the fifth floor. It's the only apartment on the floor. Please. Fifteen minutes, okay? It'll have to be. Please. I'll be there in fifteen minutes. <laughs> Professor Miriam Kasperi lives in a pretty nice place, woke up or not. I climb to five and go to the only door on the landing. The sounds of a terrific struggle come through the heavy door. It's locked, and I pound on it, but they don't hear me inside, or they're just too busy staying alive. I pound again. I stop. I become dead quiet inside. And then suddenly the door twitches open, and a man about my size slams past me and down the steps. Hey, you! I go inside. The place is a wreck, but no sign of whoever was fighting with the disheveled man who ran out of here. And I thought, I thought... Comrade Ravenel. You are looking for Professor Caspari? Yes. I, I just got here. I, I heard a struggle. A man rushed out and down the stairs. Yes. Looked very much like you, don't you think? Well, come to think of it, he was about my size and... Yeah. Where's the professor? Who was that man fighting with? Try the window. It's closed. Open it. Come. You see? He, he pushed her out of the window. I wasn't here. You were. I know, but I was out. What? A man like you was seen leaving the building after the uh, accident. I saw him. So did other witnesses, I'm sure. You can be linked with the professor, etc. You're telling me I've been framed. You see how rotten the world is, how corrupt, how it must be cleansed and purged. Look, the the police will be coming up to investigate. Quiet. We can go out the back way, comrades, today. So this is how it goes. This is how the spoilers work and then point and say, look how rotten and corrupt the world is. This, then, is Nechev monsterism in action. All or nothing at all. Those are the only alternatives. I have my alternatives. Stick with Ravenel for whatever it's worth, or go to the police or the FBI. We know how you feel, Matt. We won't let you down. We're going to do better than crack your knuckles and frown. I'm I'm in a big, big jet, Matt. Talk about traps. Talk about being caught between the devil and the deep sea. We're working on something, Matt. You better work fast and good. We'll do our best. Frame me with a red, frame me with a police. Quite an operator, yes, indeed. I can't win. We're working, Matt. Good night. Keep in touch. Ravenel? Yes. Hurry. Get in. Have you been following me again? Sit between us. Hurry. I may have been followed. Here. Put this on. Oh. Very heavy. Looks like a money belt. Under your coat. Hurry, I say. That's a load. Cause needs money. Gold is the only money we completely esteem. That's the belt. It locks. Yeah. Good. Driver, head for the waterfront drive. If you're being followed for this money, wouldn't it be shrewd of me to get out? Separate, sort of? Oh, dirty yellow fog on the river tonight. The cold, dirty fog. The weird yellow river. Listen. The river's pretty close now. A man died. What of it? Thousands, millions, billions die bitterly in squalor and defeat. 
you're not important. You, Savetic, are merely another casualty of life. We're all casualties. Yeah, you're, you're right, Ravenel. We are all casualties, eventually. You're lucky. It'll soon be over for you. The rest of us, the walking wounded, must go on living for a while. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You haven't heard? Heard what? The radio. No. What? Professor Caspari wasn't killed. Telephone wires broke her fall. She's going to give a statement concerning the attempt on her life. Pretty embarrassing for you, isn't it? Indeed. You you can't blackmail me on a murder rap now, can you? No. And you just might be an FBI informer. Then why do you trust me with this money belt? Because it is loaded with lead. Lead? And it locks on and cannot quickly be removed without the key which goes out the window. I see something glint out of the window, and I know the truth well enough now. A river and a 30-pound dead weight locked around my waist. I try to lunge out of my seat. Raven all and his goon and a boat of lead pull me down again. I'm caught and caught good. There is no escape, Savetti. You are crazy. Perhaps a new breed shall spawn out of the clean ocean. But we must die to the last man. You're crazy. You're all sick. You're insane. Escape is a dream. It's too late. Stop here, driver. The car stopped from the pier, 15 feet above the river. And I'm shoved and pushed out of the car. A nightmare. Got to end. This can't be. Here I am, a yard from the edge of the pier, the black water lapping below us, the yellow fog floating around. Be a dream, be a nightmare. End! You do understand the need for all this, Sebastian? No! No! We are dedicated to death. And in the end, even our own. So that's your philosophy. Death for everything. The only goal is death. All else is the means to that end. The destruction of this putrid society. Listen. Ready, Georgie? Listen. Listen. Now. No. No, you don't. You're not going to murder me. Stop. Stop the fire. Hurry, help. Hurry. The hands let go of me. Nobody is hit, but Ravenel has his gun out of a shoulder holster facing the roadway where I see my FBI man and police uniform. Ravenel seems to be picking his target. You think you have me? No, I have you. The end is in preparation for all of you. You shall go down in fire and blood. Night, night, and the river shall swallow everything. And then Ravenel puts his gun back into the holster, turns. Night, and the river! And jumps. Ravenel! We had to do it this way, Matt. We had to force Ravenel into an act of overt violence. His attempt to liquidate you was our out. Crazy. Insane. Yeah, complete fanatic. What about Professor Caspari? She suspected too much about him. She didn't fool him very much. Was she an FBI undercover woman? All I can say is she wasn't a communist. Mm Mm-hmm. Ravenel pretended to accept her, only to murder her. We gave out the story that she'd survived the fall and would talk so that Ravenel would have to get rid of you then. He took the bait. We moved in. But Professor Caspari is dead. She played it awfully straight. Awfully good. Yeah. This has been a real rough one, Matt. Yeah. We had to stop Ravenel now. Later it might have been too late. I know. One man dedicated to the destruction of the world. Well, that's that. Thanks a lot, Matt. Nice work. We can stand it long enough. I'll see you around. I leave the police and the FBI on the pier with Ravenel's goon and his driver. We had to stop Ravenel. Sure. Because the Nacheyev monster can come alive very easily. The insane men who have faith in this doctrine can be among us. We must guard against anything that can allow this creeping death to engulf our world. That kind of a stark, savage fight I'm in. I'm a communist for the FBI. 
I walk alone. Dana Andrews will return in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews. I want to remind you that the play you've just heard is based on history and facts. Places, people, and other data have been changed to protect the innocent. But you can read Nacheyev's grim revolutionary catechism in your library. Many of these stories are based on incidents in the experience of Matt Savetic, who worked undercover for the FBI. Next week, another exciting adventure. And we'd like very much for you to be with us. 